This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. New on Curiosity Stream, the Arctic, frigid, desolate, unforgiving. And without canine companions, early humans never stood a chance. Discover how man and dog learned to thrive together where neither could survive alone in Ice Dogs. Plus, why would a Nazi major be protecting and saving Jews? Against orders, against time, the SS major that sheltered and saved thousands of Jews. It's the good Nazi. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. You may not have heard, maybe you have. Slash is coming to the Paramount Theater. Along with special guest Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators on February 9th. So that is not too far away at all. Dude, I've seen those guys a few times, and every time it's been a great show. Highly recommend. All right, well, you got to get tickets, Steve. That's the idea. You can recommend all you want, but no one's going nowhere unless they get tickets. I highly recommend you remember the code word, because that is your ticket to tickets. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Uh, Listen to all this week between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. That's when you're going to get the code word. We'll announce it multiple times per day. And then you can head to the contest page with that code word at KISW.com. That's when you get a chance to win tickets to the show plus a Les Paul guitar signed by Slash, which is pretty sweet. It's a really nice case. I mean, they did it up real nice. Like even Ryan said, it's the nicest guitar giveaway we've ever had. And here's the code word. Here we go. Uh Uh-oh. And you can take this code word different ways you can just say the code word is fire or the code word is fire (laughs) whichever way you want to do it it's uh but or the code word is fire 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 (laughs) multiple ways but as long as you remember that the code word is fire 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 (laughs) and take that code word to kisw.com that's where you can enter your chance to win the slash show and all the other good stuff that goes with it the code word is fire baby go to k fire Go to KISW.com. Let's play B Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So let's get cracking! Release the Kraken! Tonight, baby, yeah. 4 p.m. Yeah, hopefully we're fire on the ice there. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, set fire to those penguins. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, uh, wow, that doesn't sound right. Well, that's a visual, at least. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, 4 p.m., you can watch your Kraken, and it's on Root Sports this yes. time, right? Yes, All right, so cool. JT and John on the call. Nice! Can't go right. wrong with that. Nope, not Thank at all. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> let's get to our contestant today. We've got Michael in Bellevue. Michael, are you there? I'm here. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. All right, Steve, get out of here. Get out. Goodbye. For those playing at home, Michael will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Mike, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Ready. Nice. What instrument do Australian Aborigines traditionally make from termite hollowed eucalyptus trees? A didgeridoo. Yes. What actor plays Marty Bird in the drama series Ozark? The Tucson and Elantra are car models made from what manufacturer? Hyundai. Yes. Which Hemsworth brother plays Thor in the movies? Uh, Pat. What U.S. state has the highest number of electoral votes? Texas. No. 
California. Yes. How many red balloons did Nina sing about in the 1984 song? Nine? No. 99. Yes. Yeah, baby. Which country buys the most iPhones? Uh, America? Yes. Kirby Oracle. Puckett played his entire MLB career for which team? The Minnesota Twins? Yes. Which is the fourth planet from the sun? Fourth planet. Uh, Mars. Yeah. Woo! One, two, nice. three, four, five, six, seven. Correct. Oh, I hope that's a difference maker. I didn't think he was going to get that one. No, but yeah. you know, you got a lot of time to give that one little guess left right there. Yeah, he made it happen. Yeah, buddy. I was kind of afraid because Michael's a, a younger guy, and I was afraid that some of these would be a little bit uh, uh, out of his wheelhouse. But did pretty good. Did <laughs> yeah, pretty good for you know. Yeah, because I agree with you. You know what? He 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 overshot his coverage on that one. He <laughs> outkicked it. <laughs> Steve, you're back. Are you ready? Release the Kraken. Yeah. Sploosh. What instrument do Australian Aborigines traditionally make from the termite hollowed eucalyptus oh. trees? Oh. Wow. Did you do? <laughs> yes, that was. If a somebody was filming Steve right then, that's not. Yeah, <laughs> you did not look good in that particular uh, what pantomime, act- sir. What actor plays Marty Bird in the drama series Ozark? Oh, uh, Jason Bateman. Yes. Or Justin Bateman, as BJ calls him. Right? <laughs> yeah. His other brother. The Tucson and Elantra are car models made from one manufacturer. Yes. Which Hemsworth brother plays Thor in the movies? Liam. No. Chris. Yes. yes. What U.S. state has the highest number of electoral votes? Oh. California. Yes. How many red balloons did Nina sing about the 1984 song? 99. Yes. <laughs> Wait. Wow. Which country buys wow. the most iPhones? Uh, United States of America. Yes. Nice. Kirby Puckett played his entire MLB career for which team? The Minnesota Twins. Yes. Which is the fourth planet from the sun? That would be Uranus, Rab. No. Uh, Mars. Yes. On a standard keyboard, what letters between the Z and the C? The P. No. The D? No. (laughs) The V? No. Uh, And Steve, you win. Nine to seven. So close to that perfect ten. Sorry, Michael. Good game, Steve. Thank you, my friend. Have a great one. That was a good game. Yeah. But Steve is still the best. He's coming back. Yeah. He's he's, he's coming back. He's starting Mm -hmm. to win more. That's right. I found my identity. Halfway through the season. All right. <laughs> and I'm ready to win some games. I didn't oh, think you'd get yeah. the Jason Bateman one. Well, I watched Ozark. Oh, you do? Well, I've seen the first episode three times. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we fall asleep every time. I know. And it's then we forget about it, and then like several months go by, and we're like, you know, we should try and give that Ozark show a chance. But we got to probably start from the beginning because I forgot everything that happened. Every season I go through that, and I've only gotten up to episode three of the first season. And, and, wow. there's, a new se- and there's a new season now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Season four has it. dropped. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens. We haven't gotten to it yet, but I've watched all the way up through three seasons. It's that and Tombstone. I have zero bad things to say about either of them. Everything that I've w- watched from those shows looks fantastic. It's just we fall asleep and we never get back to it. Yeah, it's and it's it's a slow uh, you mean, burn you one. You mean yeah. Yellowstone? That too. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, Tombstone was a movie. Yeah, I, you was couldn't a even get movie, through that. That one was a long movie, though. Yeah, it was a pizza, lie. and it's so filling, I couldn't finish ah, it. That's what it is. <laughs> what okay. you put on your tombstone. That's it. Yeah, uh, Yellowstone, thank you for correcting me. <laughs> uh, the only one you missed, you can look right now. What's between the Z and the C? X. Yeah! I took you did break. it! I had a look for it. I was like, <laughs> where the hell is this? I, uh, I should know this, and I don't. No, I only no. know the home row. I don't know any other things. I just yeah. know QWERTY, and then after that, I'm effed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good call, Steve. I got to remember QWERTY is also a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is. Uh, congratulations on your win, Steve. Thank you. Yeah, man. Got a new poll out. Here's what they said. Since we're talking about America, one in eight Americans refuse to ask for help in general and prefer to always go it alone. I I, I, pr- I really think the uh, the world of YouTube has made that possible. Because yes. if you need any help with anything, you just go to YouTube. Dude, you know, there are times the- I don't even bother reading the directions. I quickly look if there's a YouTube uh, tutorial, especially if it was done by the company, then I know it's legit. And I'll just watch that. I'd rather watch someone and t- uh, and hear someone tell me what to do as opposed to read it. I think for me, I can't, you know, is that I don't want to look stupid in front of somebody. 
And that means I should, you know, like when I go to somebody, go, hey, do you know how to do this? And they look at you like, you don't know how to do that. I don't, I just don't like that. It's like, yeah, I don't. Will you just help me. Don't make me feel bad. So I tend to go it alone. But the fact that a lot of us are doing that, not too sure that's a good thing. That, you know, we basically just isolate to get our problems taken care of when in reality, you know, they say it takes a village. So I've gotten better about not feeling awkward about it. I, I used to be that way, too. Where I'm like, I got to figure it out myself. But now I'm just like, I, I'll even practice. I'm like, look, I know I probably look like an idiot and I don't know how to do this. But can you show me how to tie my shoes? And oh, see, like, yeah, I, I know. I was glad to help you, Steve. Well, I've been wearing Velcro all these years. And then and I finally I, said, that, you know, it's time to be, I'm in my 40s. It's time to be a big boy and wear my shoes. Yeah, you get so many <laughs> options. I told you, the lace the, the lace options, you know, so many cool shoes. But I had those sweet uh, kangaroos, the yeah. roos. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's it. Uh, people say they pretty much half of them go, yeah, and I don't ever ask for help unless I'm completely overwhelmed. Again, you're a stress ball at that point. It's not, I mean, gosh, that's not good for us as a whole people. Do, do Especially have, not now. Is there something like in speci- like specific that like you will not ask for help in? Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause I look oh, like- directions. I, and now that I have Google Maps, I don't care even if Google Maps just sends me to, I, I will never ask for directions. <laughs> that's now, a good you know, one, yeah. It, yeah, to the frustration. Yeah, to the frustration of the people around me. It's like, why don't you just go in and talk to somebody? They, I bet they know. No, Google and I will figure it out. See, when it comes to little things, unless I really hey, mess it up. See what you did there, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> but stuff around my house, like putting in a new light fixture or changing a tire on my car. Mm-hmm. Like all these things my dad could help me with. And unless I royally mess it up, I'll ask for his help. But I like to, like, if I say, hey, I'm going to change my tire, just do it. It's like, no, but... I need to prove that I can do it. So it's the, a pride thing for me. It's like I can I can put in new light fixtures. I know how to do that. I have to get like the 10-foot ladder just for a regular ceiling, but I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, can- I, I love that because I, I don't want to do any of that stuff, Vicky. Man, I'm telling you right now, Vicky, you're becoming a catch because there's, I mean, you do all this stuff. Are and you flirting anybody- with Vicky? <laughs> I'm saying that I'm the lazy type that, man, I, you, you, I, you, if you, you would have me at, like, yeah, I do stuff around the house because I do nothing around the house and, and I don't, and I, I would love, my father used to go, what are you going to do? I mean, you got to learn how to do things. It's like, well, there's got to be other options. So Vicky's proving there are other options if you just want to do nothing around the house and don't want to learn those skills. <laughs> well, funny enough, like I made it a point when I turned like 19 or so to try to learn as much as I could because in my head, I thought guys were like my dad. They knew a little bit about everything. Mm-hmm. He knows a little bit of automotive, electrical work, this and that. Yeah. So I thought that's what guys were. And when I nope. had a boyfriend, Those days are gone. <laughs> he proved yeah. really quickly that he did not know what the hell he was doing with anything. So I was like, well, oh, I'll really? learn for myself. Oh, yeah. Well, that's true. I mean, I'm your anti-dad. Your dad is like, you know, from a generation of, of men that really did take pride in knowing all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm from a generation of men even though we're from the same generation. I'm the other side of that coin where it's like, I don't want to know anything. You're Bizarro one. Yeah, I mean, Bizarro I can tell you about all the comic book info you need, but that's not going to fix your car. The funny thing is, like, my wife is totally on to me when any time I do anything that like, I, I fix around the house, that like she's very, so, like even like something as dumb as like, oh, babe, fix the vacuum, check it out, works incredible. And she checks, I was like, wow, that's, that's good. Did you watch a YouTube video on how to do it? I'm like, yeah. 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 Still, what's the difference if somebody if somebody on YouTube teaches you or if somebody's in a wad? She's joking. God. God. That's all so defensive. Like, oh, I do because I would like joke. Like she's oh, yeah. just making fun of me because it's yeah. funny. Oh yeah, I she would. Knows yeah. I, she knows me so well that I, anything I want to do, I will learn from YouTube. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I think that I would commend you, but I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I would, uh, only because I'm so, I'm so sensitive because I don't know how to do any of that stuff that if I went to the effort, I'd be like, that's it. And I have too many, I have too many traumas from my father just going, what the hell is wrong with you that you can't find a left-handed sky hook or whatever? You know, he asked me for these things. It's like, I don't know what these things are. You never told me. So how am I supposed to in- intrinsically just know, go to the toolbox and pick the right thing? <laughs> Get me a wrench. You come back with a hammer. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what these things are. There are, there, there, there's label a them, Dad. If you want me to know what they are, put a label on them. That's exactly what I said. You must have been in my place when we were doing that, dude. So I am, I am deeply traumatized. So if I know how to do anything at all, uh, you know, I want all the praise in the world. I don't, don't, don't find out how I did it. It's a miracle that I actually can do it. Uh, but it doesn't help that I'm like just pure cockiness when I'm like, oh, check it out. Totally fix the vacuum cleaner. It's real, no yeah. problem. 
I'd be that like, guy, too, to be honest with you. It only took me like 40 minutes of watching multiple YouTube videos to right. figure out what was wrong with it. I'm picturing you coming out with like one of those uh, mechanic rags, just like cleaning your hands. Like, oh, well, babe. Oh, I got a kid's tool belt around me and everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. For you, I was thinking you were going to have your own verified belt that you're going to come out with and be oh. like, best husband in the world. That's right. Mr. Wrong with Fix that. it. I just wear my wrestling tights while I do it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Like the tool man, tool man Tim verified champion. Yeah. Nice. Well, it is time for Listeners on the Loose. This is your opportunity to pick the topic, your opportunity to guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. What do you want to talk about? We got your calls. We got your texts at 920 on the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's Listeners on the Loose, brought to you by Snoqualmie Casino. Listeners on the Loose, where you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. What do you want to talk about? Well, make sure when you do the talking, you follow Steve's rule. It's a simple rule, BJ. Show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're gonging you. And then saying goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Brad and Kent, you are on the rock. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to talk about uh, scary movies or movies that were not intentionally scary but became scary. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, movies that they weren't supposed to be but they still, like, uh, scared the blank out of you. Yeah. In this case, there's a movie called Pihu. P-I-H-U. It's about a two-year-old who wow. survives in a uh, apartment alone for like six days, and it's based on a true story. Oh. Wow! I have never heard of this movie. How old is it? Uh, tell you the truth, I don't know how old. All right, there we and go. And I'll also tell you, I saw the previews. I saw the previews, and I did not want to watch the movie. It's uh, 2018. It looks like it's a film based in India. Oh, wow. P, but, I, it, but even when you tell me about it, it seems well, like when you say scary, I was thinking of like monsters and that kind of supernatural scary. But this sounds like it's real life, like, you know, real life, horrible, scary like yeah, that. It's, a, and it's, it, it's like a two year old, maybe a three year old living in an apartment basically by herself for like six days or something. Damn. Jeez. I read the whole uh, synopsis. It's very it's very depressing and disturbing. This is not a feel good film. Mm-mm. And, and no. so it's based it, on a it, true it story, happened. too. Yeah. Yeah, it actually, it actually happened. Yeah. Well, then, so let me ask you this Did you watch the whole movie or just the trailer? Oh, no. I watched the trailer and I said, Oh, I'm not going to watch this movie. <laughs> Okay, so you you just I, all right. Well, then I I I feel like the movie was probably exactly what it was supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be like scary that a kid's got to live by themselves. Wouldn't you think that's what the movie is trying to depict? Dude, this movie is like I don't even want. Well, that. I would think with the with the with the. Uh, the in that. Oh yeah, you're done. Oh, I'm wow. not because of him. Just talking about this movie is depressing. <laughs> it's just a. Uh, well, I mean, the idea is like movies that were intentionally something, but uh, were, were something, but weren't intentionally that. I feel yeah, like this is movie was exactly was that. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what it was supposed to be. Yeah, which see, is I was kinda, thinking more like The Wizard of Oz. That movie is right. supposed to be great, but it gave me so many nightmares as a child. Right, or like you yeah, know, yeah. Big Adventure. Or yeah, not a movie about a two year old who's like spoiler, family members are dead and yeah, bad things happened, and it's by him by herself. There are some, look, I mean, we have a horrible history in this country, but man, and I think India is such a great country and there's a lot of awesome stuff that happened because of the, the culture of that country, but there is some dark stuff that you, if you, if you go deep and look at some of the stories of, that are, you know, based in some of the things that have happened in India, you'll get stories like Pihu. It's, uh, it's not pretty. Oh. Yeah, hard pass on that one, I'll tell you. 206-421-ROCK, text us at 77999. It is listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. Uh, Somebody has a question. Did you see that the NHL is having a mascot showdown? I bet the Ted Smith is excited about this. Oh, wow. I did. Do they do this every year during the All-Star break? And although I'm like... I'm a little frustrated because I'm with yeah, you. We I know have, where you're going with our this. Our mascot should be a part of this, and we still haven't announced our. Do you 
have a crazy feeling. When's the All-Star game? It's uh, Saturday, fe- February 5th and February 6th. Is The whole weekend starts February 3rd. So it's the 3rd through the 6th in Vegas. Do you have a feeling that they are going to f- reveal it before then so they can they can be part of the mascot showdown? Yeah. That seems that seems like a real loss what to if me. I hope so. Or they unveil it there. Yeah, what if it's like the Royal Rumble and just suddenly just the music breaks and you hear the cracking sounds and then suddenly Wait. comes out Grungy. whatever. Grungy. Yeah, I, uh, cuddles. I don't think they're going to blow that... Yeah, that unveiling at in Vegas. They would rather do it here in Seattle. I feel yeah. like I I'm, think you gotta, I'm with you. Yeah, do we have a game before February third here in Seattle? That's the question. Oh, good call. Because we're about to go. Know. We're now on the road. We're you know in Pittsburgh tonight. I don't know uh, if we have a schedule that you can just quickly look for February. Yeah, I don't have it in front of me. Yeah. So uh, wow, that's uh, at home against Boston on the first. No, that's, okay. that's, at, that's Boston. at Boston. Yeah. Damn so we it. don't have one. Their next home game is in Arizona on the ninth. Yeah, we're not going to have the mascot in this. Dang in this, it. I don't think. Mm. Oh wow, that the timing is really bad. If they were going to do it, they should have done it last this last game or the game before that. Well, we have a long road trip, don't we? Yeah, I mean, some games off. It's just yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you're saying we don't have another home game until like whatever February 9th, that's a uh, it's almost a couple weeks, ain't it? But there's the All Star break also in the middle of that. Oh, there is that. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. You know, you, you got you got some time. <laughs> that's a bit. You know, only because they said they were going to do it by December. At least I I think that's what they said. Right. They said Wasn't end it? of the year, which made us think: is it the end of the actual year or the end of the year? Yeah. Meaning like the end of the season. Yeah. See, I think you should say end of the season, not end of the year. Uh, you know, sorry. Um, but that seems like a missed opportunity. This whole mascot. I I, I was not aware the NHL did something like oh, this. So dude, it's every All Star game. Yeah, they have like, a, and it's like I didn't realize they do all this stuff. So they not only do they have a like a hockey game, but they also play broom ball. They have a skills competition. They also do medieval games. So maybe like some jousting. Oh, okay. A Golden Knight should be good at that. I feel like Gritty should walk away with the everything on this. Oh, even though the jousting, the Golden man. Knight is like, that's what he's about. He's care. a knight. Gritty's crazy. Okay. Gritty uh, doesn't give an F what you do. Yeah, He'll but do Gritty it better. Doesn't, yeah, but Gritty doesn't have skills. He doesn't look like he really They'll practices. Throw a pie right in your face, him. kick you in the junk, and thrust his hips around. Uh, yeah, but he's got to ride on a horse with a long pole. I mean, I'm not sure Gritty's got those skills. I'm going with the knight. I'm See, going with the Golden Knight in that skill. I'm looking at some of the mascots. Not every team has a mascot, so it's like 28, te- 28 of the teams have mascots. And oh, some wow, of the mascots, okay. I didn't even know even... I don't. I have no idea that the Florida Panthers, their mascot's called Stanley C. Panther, like Stanley Cup Panther. <laughs> oh, Stanley C. That's, oh, that's okay, pretty awesome. That's yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Moose and the Winnipeg Jets. That's a good name. You do know, the Bruins have a mascot? They, I don't know if they do. It's Blades. Oh, I gotta imagine he's a bear. Yeah, I would hope the so. Bruin, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I. I. You know. What? I've he's, seen him before. Yeah. Yeah. All right. He's pretty cool looking. Oh, yeah, the LA right. Kings. Their their mascot's pretty sweet as well. Uh, it was a belly. It's like a lion. Oh, know, like a king. He's the king. Okay, oh, okay. okay. That makes sense. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, All right, I mean, well, you know, at, we this, are. at the same time, though, like you say, they it would probably be a better idea for them to do it at home with a game. And I agree. However, they made some weird decisions at different times, like with the NFTs and stuff. So it wouldn't surprise me if all of a sudden All Star Game, there's our mascot. I mean, that's the that's the place to get all eyes on you. Yeah. So That's I mean, a good. That is a very good point. Maybe they will do it there. They may, you know, because they know that. Look, Kraken fans will probably be watching the All Star Game because of all the fun stuff that happens, and it will be broadcast hopefully nationally where everybody can watch it. Maybe right. that is it. Yeah, maybe they will reveal it there. I'm willing to put money that they don't, but I would. <laughs> I, I'm. I, yeah, I, I'll take it. Yeah, that saddens me. I really feel like that would be kind of cool to have the the mascot be part of the mascot wars. But hey. You know what? They got to do what they got to do. What if you're the mascot? Like, you've been waiting. You got the gig, and you're just waiting to be unveiled. And you're like, hey, guys, like you, you keep checking your email. You keep checking your phone. You start getting nervous. Maybe they went with a different mascot. Like, you know, it's like, hey, guys, you still remember me, right? Like, I'm still, I'm still your guy or your girl, whatever it is. And now you're, like, looking at this all-star opportunity that you could go to yeah. Vegas and hang out with the other mascots. And you're like, like that just sucks. Dude, this is the best kept secret, by the way. You're right. Whoever is playing the mascot, uh, you figure they would have blabbed to somebody. I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Do mean, you want to lose that gig? Well, <laughs> right, what if yeah. it's me this whole time and I've just been playing yeah. stupid? Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like you. It's probably a younger person. Right, I'm feeling me. like the younger person will have a beverage. 
and that's where stuff comes out. Like, like usually, you know, I mean, someone's got to know, and then somehow it gets out, and then maybe there's an internet rumor, but nothing. There's been nothing. Someone's really been good. What if there's such a massive, like, non-disclosure agreement? That like oh, you just, yeah. you know what I mean like you know yeah. sometimes you just have to scare the living heck out of a mascot yeah you like look you say anything you're gonna owe us a million dollars damn oh jeez so your spouse doesn't even know like so are you ever gonna get a job I swear I have a job I really do I just have to wait until they let me go there and do it that has to be just killing that person uh, like I just want to get yeah. out on the ice I want to be the mascot I'm so yeah. excited and when is this gonna happen well yeah. You pick the topic, you guide the show. It is listeners on the loose, 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. More of your calls and more of your texts at 933 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history, but the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, one in every five children killed in traffic crashes in the U.S. was a pedestrian. That's why 3M is working alongside local governments and NGOs to help improve crosswalk visibility and traffic markings in school zones in a worldwide initiative to provide kids with a safe walk to school and access to the education they deserve. To learn more and take action, visit 3M.com slash school zone safety. 3M Science. Applied to life. New on Curiosity Stream. Are we close to building machines that are almost human? And can new technology give us superpowers? Find out on Super Sapiens. And in 1919, a British composer wrote the longest and most complex symphony in history. Conductors tried to perform it, but failed declaring it cursed. Now a group of musicians will attempt the impossible, if they dare, on Curse of a Gothic Symphony. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. 99.9 KISW, the Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Got a text from the guy that was thinking about getting a Kraken jersey yesterday. He was asking about doing customization and stuff. And apparently he said, I tried getting my custom Kraken jersey yesterday. They didn't have my size and authentic. Yay, skinny person problems. But they said it only takes 15 minutes to put the numbers and the customization done. So I got a couple shirts to hold me over till then. F them penguins from Sam and Renton. It's awesome. <laughs> so what's your size, dude? Are you a small? I, I mean, I, I, I'm always I, of smalls. Are yeah, they? yeah. We went, we went and looked wow. for for Lynn, and she could not find any small. That makes sense. It's probably oh, a popular why. size for for women, and, yeah. and then also the smaller dudes as well. Yep. Mediums probably as well. Like male, yeah. I would, the male mediums might fit somebody who's a you know a little bit larger who is a female, but the mediums would be fine for them. Yeah, me. I've always had that problem. Like, yeah, there's no larges or XLs anymore. But it seems like they finally fi- fixed that problem in a lot of places. A good medium is always a good size to go with, right? Oh, yeah, especially with a hockey jersey. Well, and a lot of times I will say you should buy maybe a size up, especially if you plan on wearing a hoodie a hoodie under it, because that's what I did. It was like, I need to oh, wear it. good call, Danny. I'm going to be freezing otherwise, and it was the best decision I've made. Ever. I feel, yeah, yeah, that and football jerseys, too. Yeah, you're absolutely right, because then you get to have whatever you have on and still be warm. Yeah, good call. So I had a hockey question. And Migs, do you think Mark Giordano is going to be traded at the trade deadline? Yes. Yep. 100% yes. Oh, really? I'd be shocked if he doesn't. I mean, that's just, dude, the team's not going anywhere this year. I mean, I know he's our captain, and it's going to suck to see him go, because obviously you're going to always forever remember the first captain of the team, but he's not getting any younger. He's in his late 30s. He still has some gas in the tank, and there's going to be a team that's going to be desperate to have a defenseman like him come trade deadline when they're making a push for the playoffs. And also, selfishly, he's probably going to want to go to a team 
that maybe has a shot at going to the playoffs because his time is pretty limited. So I, I would be very surprised if Mark Giordano is still a member of the Kraken at the end of March. Um, you got anybody else that you think might go? Because, yep. you know, draft picks are good. I, I, mean, I think that, Chris yeah. Trieger is going to go. And I know that's a bummer, but I think he's going to go. He's the backup goalie. He hasn't, obviously, goaltending has been an issue here, but it, but he's kind of, he still has some uh, appeal and not a big contract like uh, um, uh, Grubauer plus Decord. Yeah. The other goalie's playing really well when he's been given an opportunity. So I think they see something with that. I, and also, like, Drieger's got potential to get some draft picks for him. He's, 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 uh, a guy that uh, I think a lot of teams will be willing to give some players or some uh, draft picks for. Uh, and that's what you kind of want to do right now. It's like you want to take advantage of the fact that our chances for the playoffs are pretty slim to none. So we might as well get some good draft picks and some good prospects. Uh, and also uh, Yarn Croak. I would be shocked if he's back. And he's really good. But another reason being that he holds a good opportunity for us to get some trade pick, uh, draft picks. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's an exciting opportunity because I, I love that. I love that either you guys, you know, you make a shot and get, you know, you go for it and get everybody you can to, you know, make a push in the playoffs or you sell everything again and just get that farm system looking good, man. It, I, I'm, I, I believe in both those strategies. And I do hope I'm wrong with Drieger because I do like him, but I, I, I feel like that's a guy that they could get some draft picks for. Yeah. It's funny because I had this entire conversation with my friend Chris when I went to Denver to watch the uh-huh. Avalanche and the Kraken, and he was like, I was the, the same kind of thing as like most Kraken fans who are new to hockey when he was like, oh yeah, Giordano's, G- however you say his name, is going to get traded. And I was like, why? He's our captain. And he was like, no, dude, like you need to trade him because yeah. you're going to get amazing picks for him. And if if the Kraken knows what they're doing, which it seems like they do, he's gone. And I was like, oh, that's kind of sad, but it makes sense. It does suck. I mean, yeah. but it's just, it, it, and also, man, yeah, March 21st, I think is the trade, the trade deadline. It's always bonkers. That's the one fun thing with hockey is like there, there's always a ton of trades. It's not like some like baseball and stuff where you're like trade deadline, nothing happened. Like something's going to happen, especially with the Kraken because yeah. they're obviously not going to be going to the playoffs or if, who knows, crazier things have happened, but they, they, they need to get some draft picks. You're almost talking two months from now, which, yeah, I mean, look, you're right. Anything can happen in two months, but. From what we've seen, you know, it's it's hard to expect anything more than 500 play for the rest of the season, and that would still be an improvement if we if they could play 500 for the rest of the season because they haven't done that right up till now. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that would be a great improvement, but still would not do a whole lot for them. And frankly, I don't want to see them do that. I want them to be like you know to get a, a good top lottery pick as well. So I. You know what? Go there, play some entertaining hockey, have some fun, but finish in last place, please. Thank you. Someone said, did you hear that the Kraken are having a super skills showcase on Saturday, February 13th? They climate pledge. That should be cool. I just saw that. They sent that an email. Yeah. It's like 10 bucks. It's a giant skills competition that's going to be featuring the players just having some fun on the ice and people could pay to come watch them just, you know, fastest shot, hardest oh. shot, things along those lines. It's and not a game. It's just a, a, an off day or is it before a game? No, it's just like a skills competition. It's not a game. Oh, that's awesome! I think it's just something fun for the the players to do with the uh, the fans. Dang, it's called that's the some... Super Skills Showcase featuring the players, Woo! hardest shot, shooting accuracy, trick plays, obstacle courses, and more. Maybe they'll unveil the mascot there. That's yeah. the end more. Oh, and they wow. also going to have the broadcast crew on the benches, some celebrity guests, and some giveaways and things like that. That's a lot of fun, man. Yeah. I, I I did not know that hockey did stuff like that. Soccer does it too. Uh, before wow. the All Star game, they have like the and it's amazing to watch because it's some of the trick shots they do and whatnot. It's like oh, these guys are just professionals. So I'm excited to watch them. For and hockey. DJ, it's a first of a, it's kind event according to the email. So oh, well, that, well that makes sense. That's why I've never heard of it. That's a genius idea. I think. You know, I don't know. Maybe football it's hard to do because of the busyness of their week. Uh, But, man, I I could see, you know, like baseball or somebody doing something like this. How cool would it be to go to the stadium? You get to go to the arena and see the dudes in a non-game situation doing fun stuff, and you get all the advantages of Shaq's chicken and and, and the Ooh, lair. Yeah, I, I mean, never even thought on. about that. Now you yeah. got me for ten dollars. I can get yeah, all that. I, Forget about it. it. I mean, the, hopefully, all that stuff is open. You would. You'd be dumb not to. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm 100% behind And you. honestly, like, I, I enjoy the All-Star game. I enjoy the skills competition way more when oh, it comes yeah. to the hockey All-Star yeah. break. Yeah. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 
Uh, somebody I was wondering if I, oh, they said took half a day off of work today to see Ghost and Volbeat. Ghost and Volbeat tonight. First time at the new arena is 37 too old for the pit. I guess we'll see from Sarah C. in Ooh, Auburn. Wow, there you Sarah, go. Not wow, too old. Get in wow. there. Mix Just it up. Don't jump. Oh, and, yeah. And, and stay away from bottles on the, on the ground. Yes, because you might break your foot. Uh, Sarah's close, though. I mean, I you know, you can still do it in your 30s. I get it. And you see what happened to Danny. He's in his early 30s. I think once you hit the big 4-0, you, you know, unless you know what, you're just, you're committed to the dream. Yeah, why not? Have fun now. But when you get to be in your 40s, you kind of go, I'm going to scale back in some of the extreme things. You know, I mean, I can enjoy the music, but I'm going to enjoy it from a different vantage point. <laughs> So I said, why would you say that Nicolas Cage is the joke of Hollywood? He's Hollywood legit. Face off. Family man. Just to name a couple. He's got a ton of awesome movies to his credit. Mm. He's also got a ton of non-awesome movies to his credit. He also got into some tax trouble, which forced him to do a lot of those non-awesome movies. You know, his off-screen antics and some of the movie choices he made while he was trying to get money put him in that situation. And that's be- that's the others' opinions. I personally think he is a treasure to Hollywood. Uh, is he a national treasure? <laughs> hey. You know it. Alrighty. That's what's up, PJ. <laughs> That's what it's all about. <laughs> Ghost Rider, greatest film of all time. Stop okay, it. we are going to stop saying that legitimately. Uh, look, I, I think he's a decent actor, and he's had good movies, no doubt about it. And even some of his comeback stuff, in you know, in the right situation, he, he's been really good. I loved him in uh, Ki- uh, in Kick Ass. I thought he was really oh, good in such that. Such a great role. And I yeah. still hope one day he gets that opportunity to be Superman in a movie. That's all he wants, man. He's not getting any uh, younger. There's so many Superman right now. Why not give him a shot? I mean, so many people have played the role, uh, including, I can't think of the guy's name. The guy's doing the Superman and uh, Lois show or uh, that's on uh, the C-Dub. I don't know his name, but he's doing a good job as Superman. Uh, why not? I mean, let's see what Nick does. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't traditionally look like Superman, but that's okay. Why not make it like that's the, the premise? Like, look, we, we can't cast you as actual Superman, but let's make a movie about a guy who thinks he's Superman. And you can dress up like Superman, and you can try and do Superman things, but you're just like an ordinary Joe that's just got some kind of like weird, you know, midlife crisis type of a thing where you're just <laughs> convinced that you're Superman. Oh, that's a great idea. There was a there, somebody did a movie like that, uh, and I think it was uh, Michael Rapaport thought he had superpowers. And the he whole does. He has the super bil- power ability to film other people shoplifting, but yeah, yeah, and swearing a lot, and swearing a lot. It's yeah, a, yeah. And it's amazing ability. <laughs> yeah, well, you you described that indie movie where he was. He said, "I have superpowers," and the therapist is like, "Dude, you have issues. That's all you have." But he drew. He, he I think he wore a costume and everything. Um, if I'm like, thinking of the right movie, I feel like it needs to be a sequel to Nicolas Cage's new movie because in this movie he plays Nick Cage who is an actor who doesn't have a lot of money and he gets paid to make an appearance by a billionaire who's a super fan and then he kind of gets stuck in this weird mess with the CIA because apparently the billionaire fan's a drug kingpin. But it has Tiffany Haddish, Neil Patrick Harris, Pedro Pascal. Like, it's a lot oh, of big wow. names. I didn't know about this movie. It sounds yeah. awesome. And it's called The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. It looks <laughs> ridiculous. There's a Red Band trailer out there. Oh, God. I'll it's- have to check that out. Yeah, because yeah. they kind of go with that, where it's actually Nick Cage just trying to become Superman, and then somehow he figures out a way to do a low-budget version of Superman, an aging Superman, and that's the whole thing. Perfect. This, uh, you know what? I like this new concept that he's doing. I know, Steve, you you really want this to happen. So hopefully, Just this for movie, him, man, yeah, hopefully this movie will be so successful that he can then fund this project. That you know, which and hopefully you get the picture idea to him because maybe it hasn't even occurred to him. I just like seeing people fulfill their dreams, even massively rich, successful actors. I don't oh, you care. like to see that? Oh, okay. Yeah, what a I great just, guy I you are. I just want to see people happy, man. Oh. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, and and we all know that's the story behind Nicolas Cage. So give him it. I have to say, I pay to see that movie. Yeah, this movie. Uh, well, your movie, yes, but I like the movie Vicky described. <laughs> that that uh, I I think that's more interesting to me right now. I'll yeah. rent that. Yeah. Oh, I'll rent that. Well, you know what? There you go. There's a there's blockbuster written all over it. Is it in theaters or is it uh, is it on demand? It looks like it's going to be in theaters oh. on April twenty second. Oh, so HBO's not doing it, huh? Dang it. So around September, I'll be able to see it. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Uh, there. Yeah. Uh, sorry, not sooner. buddy. Yeah, they're doing a lot of these movies sooner. It seems like they're waiting like 45 days. Not like in a month and a half, you get to see a movie uh, on demand somewhere. So, hey, congratulations, Steve. It'll come sooner than you think. Yes. Listeners on the loose, you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Uh, Someone just texted saying, What was your favorite cartoon growing up that you still watch as an adult? For me, it's Ed. Ed and Eddie encouraged the cowardly dog. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Courage was awesome. 
I don't know if I watch any cartoons. I mean, if if the Smurfs are around, I'll watch them. Is there any that you're kind of excited to introduce Tatum to? I don't know if it's ever going to work. I tried to introduce her to the old 1980s era of uh, Saturday morning cartoon for wrestling. Oh, they had, like, Hulk Hogan and Hillbilly wow. Jim. And really, you did that? I did. You, it didn't wow. last very long. She's oh, just like, I don't blame her. Bluey? Was, Bluey? I'm like, okay, Bluey's better than this. You're I think right. that that wrestling animation show was horrible. It was terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. At least she's got taste. At least it's nice to know your daughter's got taste and said, no, Dad, get this off the screen. Maybe like Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Because, I mean, she enjoys Mighty Mike, and I feel like Mighty Mike is a new version of Tom and Jerry. Okay. Oh, I, you know what? I haven't checked Mighty Mike out because I'm awesome. not a Tom and Jerry fan, but maybe Mighty Mike does it better. I don't think oh, yeah, I you know. Tom and Jerry, to me... Are you really going to uh, check out yeah. Mighty Mike based on this? <laughs> yes! I hope so. I mean, if you're saying it's... you know, Because, look, I never liked Tom and Jerry because it wasn't Warner Brothers. And I just... I don't know who made those. Hanna-Barbera. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Hanna, see, Hanna-Barbera, to me, was always the inferior animator. I'm sorry. Uh, they really were. I mean, they really, really were. I always thought Warner Brothers kicked their ass. Now, they it ended up... proves having, that there's gatekeeping and infighting amongst whatever yeah, genre, everything. including well, this is, children's yeah. cartoons. Oh, yeah. I was going back. I mean, because I remember. I remember Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera were the big dogs in, in, you know, and then you had Filmation that did some stuff once in a while, but those were the big dogs in animation. That's all you ever saw was a Hanna-Barbera production or a Warner Brothers production. Well, I think because of mergers and stuff, I think Tom and Jerry is now Warner Brothers. So boom, there yeah, you go. Really? Yeah, Hanna Barbera is now part of the Warner Brother universe. Yeah, Warner Bro- Brothers era, two thousand six to present. Well, what does that tell you? That means that Hanna Barbera lost. No, and it means that they're so good that everybody wants them. No, no, I, ha, ha, not ha, going ha, that way. Why, why would they buy them if they weren't good? Well, they should have used the name. We're arguing over the children's anymore. cartoons, yeah, kids. We yeah, we yeah, are. Sure, why not? And you know what? I won the argument, Steve. Thank you. Oh. You know, I tuned out once you two started talking, so I feel like I won the argument. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's always the best way to win any argument is just to tune out. Yeah, you got it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so for me, the only thing, I don't watch a lot of cartoons anymore, but I'll tell you what I always put on if it comes on Christmas, and that's a Charlie Brown Christmas. So, And that was always my, my go-to growing up was, uh, was Peanuts. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to say any Charlie Brown stuff. That's not a bad pick. Yeah. For me, it's, it's The Simpsons. <laughs> oh, like I'll still like my TV has wow. one of the special channels is just an all Simpsons that's channel. That's not really a did you grow, did you grow up it's watching a cartoon that? that children's watch and How I grew up wait. watching it. How old were you when you started watching the Simpsons? Eh, sixth or seventh grade. Twelve ish. Oh. All right. Yeah. Well, I guess. I mean, and I was four years old when I had my Bart doll, so I was I didn't understand what the Simpsons were talking about, but I just loved watching it. For oh, Bart. I guess you know what, Steve. I forgot about with millennials. Yeah, right, that well, might I'm be fine. the first cartoon the, they really did watch. The cartoon I still watch. I used to watch when I was younger. Was Fritz the Cat? Google it. Fritz Google it. the Cat. Wow, are we going yeah, back? Same four word. Are you? You know what? Seriously, where are you pulling some of these relates? That I mean, oh my God. I'm I'm sneezing. I was found it. Yeah, I'm sneezing from the dust. I have to basically knock off that relate. Oh, that cartoon's timeless, BJ. Yeah, what Fritz the, the cat. Furry? Oh yeah, oh, no, this is this is way back in the day, Vicky. This is uh, it's, a, it's an yeah. adult yeah. cartoon about yeah, a cat that got it on yeah. with other people from yeah. the seventies. Yeah, so I feel like you've said the name Fritz the Cat, and it's always gone over my head. You never bothered so I, to Google it. I always thought it was like you know the Top Cat or something. Like Felix no. the Cat. Yeah, no. Google no. it. This is the first time I've Googled it. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Fritz <laughs> doesn't hold back. No, he doesn't. Mm-mm. No, it's Fritz gets gets the he gets weirdest it. cartoon ever. I wow. love the tagline. We're not X-rated for nothing, baby. Yeah, it's <laughs> next level, man. I'm oh, yeah. not that Family Guy hasn't tackled Fritz the Cat. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, again, Maybe he's you know. afraid because Fritz is packing some stuff. Yeah, yeah Fritz. Uh, yeah, Fritz wasn't as mainstream <laughs> as one would want. Um, hey, here's a question for you: What do Ryan Castle and a coffin have in common? I'm going to tell you at 9:52 on the Rock. BJ and Migs mornings on the Rock at 99.9 KISW. And now. The Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and a coffin have in common? Big with the dark black makeup crowd. You know it. Yeah. It's true. But Ryan Castle is amazing. I mean, the goth, the goth crowd love him. Yeah, people that like to be sad are into me. Oh, yeah. You Way got that into right. him. <laughs> Some said, uh, someone said they both can be purchased at Costco. 
Oh, yeah. Get a coffin true. at Costco? Oh, I could get anything at Costco. Oh, That's yeah, get me. I do you, swear I got, oh. do you <laughs> get like a pack of seven? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you never know when you need them all. Yeah. Uh, we got to talk about this man named Zachary. He's 33. He arrived at a Border Patrol checkpoint near the U.S.-Mexico border with an American flag draped coffin in the back of his van back in October. And so, so, say, hey, what's going on over there? And he goes, oh, dead guy, Navy guy. And the agent, who was a military veteran, got pretty suspicious when he knows that the coffin was rusted and dented and Jeez. the flag taped onto it had was with, it was taped on with packaging tape. Wow. And another agent, who also a veteran, agreed that that was not standard protocol <laughs> for a funeral procession for a military veteran. So they were like, yeah, they're going to do a search. How about they were smuggling two men in the coffin who wow. were alive? $6,000 they were trying to, you know, they, he got paid to try to smuggle these two dudes. I mean, there wow. are better ways. There've got to be. Uh, well, then again, that's where they were. So maybe they're. Uh, yeah. Man. Ryan Castle, I know you say there's got to be better ways, but no, he's got the 12 pack. That's the only way. That's next. DJ and Migs play of the day. I learned that on TikTok. He was a talking seal back in like the 80s or something. His name was Hoover. I want to hear what Hoover Hello. sounds like. That sounds like me and my wife trying to get me out of bed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Nothing against him. Fresh is ready. Yeah, oh. sorry, but uh, nothing against Hoover, but he sucks. Oh, wow. Uh, hey. uh, Thank you. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. If I call Travis, will I actually see him or someone who works for him? Absolutely. When you come in to see my to my office, uh, when you first call in, my staff will try to help you with with any basic questions that you have. Uh, I can give you a call back, uh, but they'll schedule usually try to schedule you for a free consultation with me, the attorney, and I'll meet with you personally. We'll talk about your the basics of your case and I'll take you through a question and answer session that usually last an interview that usually lasts about 30 minutes um, where we'll get the basics of your financial situation I can answer your questions and we can talk about whether bankruptcy makes sense your uh, your non-bankruptcy options uh, and how bankruptcy could affect you what the process is thanks Travis if you have more questions about bankruptcy you can reach out to Travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com that's choose the right chapter.com Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, one in every five children killed in traffic crashes in the U.S. was a pedestrian. That's why 3M is working alongside local governments and NGOs to help improve crosswalk visibility and traffic markings in school zones in a worldwide initiative to provide kids with a safe walk to school and access to the education they deserve. To learn more and take action, visit 3M.com slash school zone safety. 3M Science. Applied to life. New on Curiosity Stream, the Arctic, frigid, desolate, unforgiving. And without canine companions, early humans never stood a chance. Discover how man and dog learned to thrive together where neither could survive alone in Ice Dogs. Plus, why would a Nazi major be protecting and saving Jews? Against orders, against time, the SS major that sheltered and saved thousands of Jews. It's the good Nazi. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com.